How much time outdoors did you spend growing up? Um, as much as I or could. Or what time did you spend indoors yeah, growing up? Yeah, barely any. Once it got dark, I mean, you know, we didn't have um, electricity up there in our cabin that I grew up in until I was around um, what, probably seven or eight years old. We were in that cabin. And uh, so you really, you ended up, because you couldn't just flick on a light, and the kerosene lanterns are what we used for light. And, um, you know, we would do homework and stuff once it was dark if I had to do it. Um, but basically, I spent every moment I could outside because that's what I enjoyed doing and my mom sort of just let me do it and supported it and then when we had to do schoolwork or you know chores or all those things I just stuffed them in around that. What would you do outside? Um, I mean playing you know just boy stuff running up and down the river trying to catch fish trying to catch animals picking berries smacking things with sticks climbing trees making tree forts or building you know, different caves or, or, you know, courses that I'd run through. We'd go exploring and, you know, play make-believe and... You're the best climb, playground climb ever. over the place, yeah, and just, yeah, be outside. I mean, there's, when you're little and you have a, you know, time outside, it's just, it's unbelievable fun. And to what extent did you just have kind of unlimited freedom, even when you were really young? Essentially, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I had. I didn't really have, I mean, I had obviously parameters in terms of I had a lot of, um, chores, but they didn't really seem like that bad of chores because they weren't just tedious, monotonous things. They were actual physical labor. I mean, I was the oldest boy, so I did a lot of the wood wood chopping, wood stacking, moving things, um, moving rocks, building walls, doing little things that were like, you know, suited to me and that were fun to do as a little boy. So, um, but that was really it. Besides that, I had, I had almost exclusive rights to my own decisions and my own time, and that was, uh, yeah, it was a huge pleasure. Well, and it's also, I, I mean, I, I don't think your family's got it enough credit for how amazing a, a place it was where you guys grew up, because you're on, what, a, a few hundred acres, you have, you know, the soccer field, uh, trampoline, tennis courts, you have the stream, you guys would go yeah, hacky sacking, frisbee. Climbing weight yeah. room to do yeah. stuff in. Um, yeah, there's, it's, it's it, ultimate, I mean, it's what, a tennis camp, and right. there's nothing that changes when, the, you know, the only thing that changes is the kids leave. So if you had local kids that came, essentially, it's just a place, it's an awesome place with every facility you could want, essentially, to play and do sports and hang out. In the home, you already mentioned this a little bit, but, you know, no electricity, no plumbing, n no running uh, water, no phones. It was built by your dad. I believe, literally, to get upstairs, you basically had to, uh, climb over a rock. Yeah, you walked uh, up around a rock. That was the house that my parents built um, that I grew up in when I was, until I was about eight years old. Yeah, how true is it that your parents around that time were making no more than $500 a year? I don't know. I mean, I haven't gone back and done the accounting, but I, I know that um, my dad was just, he wasn't making, I mean, he wasn't really doing anything. He would do like random little things, but you know, helping with logging projects or things like that. But, but basically, yeah, we gardened and spent time together as a family. And my mom ended up working, doing some stuff with like Gale River Sewing, which was a company that did like, you know, she like a little bit like Garna Hill, like sewing sheets and things like that. And she just liked that because it was social with her friends. But I think, um, yeah, we, we certainly weren't, um, weren't making a lot of money. How do you think that upbringing shaped you? I don't know. I mean, you know, I think obviously everyone's environment when they're young and through those through those, you know, early years is is really probably impactful as to who they become when they're older, but it's hard to really say what what that impact was or what different changes would have changed how I am now because um, obviously you kind of get one shot at it and <laughs> you are who you are, but you know, we had a lot of um, time as a family. We had a really close family. We had a lot of honesty and a lot of um, independence and those are all, I think, really valuable qualities that I, I continue to, to embrace and to embody now as, as a parent and as an older person. So I think, um, you know, obviously I, I gained a lot of great perspective from those years. I really like hard work and I enjoy um, accomplishing tasks. So, you know, most of the work that I did was pretty easy for me to enjoy. And it wasn't really so much about delayed gratification. It was I really had specific goals that I had to accomplish. And so... I was working in the summer to pay for my skiing um, in the winter, and you know it was it was great because I had the circumstances demanded that discipline and demanded like that I I couldn't spend the money that I was making, and so <clears throat> that made it so I just worked harder because I 
didn't feel like having a bunch of downtime where I couldn't spend my money. So I would just spend the time working instead, which helped me to make more money um, that I could then put towards skiing. So it was really, you know, it was pretty easy for me throughout, throughout those years. It was, the hard part was that, um, you know, I, I had to balance leisure time and, you know, just relaxing, doing nothing with work. But I think that's a really good lesson to learn at a young age.